So here we go, we have the doors that are routed out. As you can see, there's nice crisp edges to everything. We will actually end up sanding most of this off. Here I've already started to do that. And here are the nice smooth edges, as you can see. And here are the panels that are almost ready to go. All right, so here is my here goes nothing attempt at gluing up these panels that are now all set. I still need some finishing work after they're all glued up. Get rid of the little gaps that are there. I've got some hot hide glue warming up in the double boiler. That should be ready in a little bit. We'll take these apart and glue them together. There's a little bit of space in there for this to expand. It's more side to side room. We'll clamp them up. Probably only have enough clamps to do one at a time. One of the reasons I'm using the high glue is that it's reversible and make sure it's the right consistency. I don't have enough water in it. Starting to get jello y. And what will happen is if we get into problems, we can just heat it up again and take it apart. So that's one of the reasons I'm using it. And here is the glue up finished as I'm fixing the last little bit. And here I'm planing the panels at the back of the cabinet, getting everything nice and square and flat. There are a couple panels that I'm going to be doing here to then glue up uh, and make individual panels that match the doors on the front side. So you can see me at work and now the side panels are here and cut and grooved. So we're slowly getting there. This is the side panels, not obviously set in place. There'll be a groove about this deep. This is the backs. This is where the router was having the hardest time and I have some router issues up there. So in just a moment I'm going to go ahead and sand off all the rough edges and smooth out lines and essentially make everything more or less the same. This is yet to be glued up but it's all now tightly fitted so everything fits nicely. After this we'll be getting the tenons on those boards over there and then we'll have, I'll probably glue this up first so I'll have the side panels completely done and then work on the groove here to rest the bottom board in and then I have to figure out a fastening system for the middle shelf which will probably just be built out. I'll probably screw or route something into the area to rest it on and then just have it resting so that it can expand and contract. Alright, I'm going to try something new. I've joined my board. So I have this little gap. It's not present on the other side. It's a very fine gap. And I'd like to seal that up. It really doesn't extend up here at all. All that looks fine. Just down here where we have parted ways a little bit. So I've thinned down my hide glue a little bit. So it's pretty runny. And I'm going to go ahead and try to fill those gaps in. I have a squeegee here to potentially push it through. So we'll see how that goes. Okay. I've squeegeed that into the line. Looks like it's filling the crack fairly well. 
we will see. We'll let this dry and go ahead and sand it down. So because of my inexperience and because of the kind of wood this is, which is very fully figured, I have a lot of pretty large tear outs. This will disappear because it's on the edge and it'll be routed out when I do the edging, but I'm going to have to fill this later, unfortunately. But I've decided to do it after I stain it, so we'll see how that works out. So the glue-ups are done. We still have a lot of fill to do in these areas in here. I'm going to do that after I stain. Right now I am just cutting off the ends so they're 33 and a half inches. So I've already done that side and squared it up. I'm going to do this side next. And then after I do that I'm going to go ahead and measure out the 17 and a half inches side to side and then do the next panel. I don't have any way of clamping this and I'm having a hard time running the line well with my saw, but it's progressing. I tipped the camera over so there's not much to see. Okay, we have it cut off now. Just have to clean up the sides, the block plane, and then I'm going to make sure that my distance is correct. Do a knife line here and then plane down. And to squaring it. off another side. That was fairly flat. You can see the line kind of dips a little bit towards the middle. And this side's a little longer. This is going to disappear when I rod it out. Things like this will need to get filled later. So this is all in reference to the midline where I glued it up, which that's the only line I know is nice and straight. Okay, we're back. <clears throat> Getting ready to scribe out my mortise and my legs. These are the two legs that actually got damaged while I was trying to square off the ends. I took a nice chunk out and wasn't able to save that piece. I'm not sure where it went. I wanted to glue it back on, but I couldn't find it. So I've already laid out some knife lines, and I'm just going to pencil in what actually is going to be taken off. So this is one half. It's going to come across this way and down. Same on this side. And this will be the same on two sides at 90 degrees from each other. Here's the other one. And I've scribed a midline to help me when I finally do the channel down the middle. We're not quite ready for that yet. Now what will happen with these lines that I'm drawing in here is that I'll go ahead and chop them out with the chisel. I need to actually finish this. This line doesn't go all the way up. It's going to go right there, but the line is actually not there. Uh, and then I will cut at an angle down to my line here for depth. Along there. The saw from here down to there. And then use the chisel to kind of hog out some of the excess wood. Uh, and then use the router plane to finish it off. So I'm just using the pencil to kind of make these lines a little more visible. They're already cut into the wood. 
and scored for me. So this same process will occur with all four legs. These are next. I just finished making sure they were all the same height. And so this is the next portion. So I ran into some issues while I was routing out the back panel. At some point, as I was routing out the last bit, you can see this is not quite a straight line. I'm going to soften this down with sanding so it shouldn't be as big of an issue. But I think what happened is right here, the router actually dropped. Because if you see over here, I don't have that same side. So this is not in as much. So this is going to be a slightly off-center panel. And if I turn it up this way, you can see the router had dropped down in the top. This part is in the top of the router. It was getting cut off deeper. Um, and unfortunately, the whole cut is like that. And there's nothing I can really do to repair it. If I cut this in deeper, I'll essentially make this go away and I need something to hold into the into the wall so um, this side was okay just needs to be rough sanded the top is problematic as well however the first one went fine um, nice sharp walls uh, good seam this is going to be rounded off a little bit everything is smooth because I did that on this side on the these are the short panels for the back so I got rid of this edge so I'll get rid of this edge again um, but these were much cleaner, so a little sanding and, and this panel uh, turned out much better than the other one. Um, this is all going to be towards the wall, uh, but at some point this piece of furniture might be pulled out from the wall and therefore I'm trying to make it look nice. So <clears throat> you may have seen I already have my side pieces. These are to accept right here. So this is going to be slotted for this to be accepted. Um, so we'll be doing that in a little bit. I haven't scored out the line yet. Um, and then we're on to doing the major cross pieces. And uh, actually, let's see. One of these sets is cross. This is actually, I think, the height. These are the cross pieces, and this is the uh, mid piece. So, moving on to that shortly.